hydrochloroquine hydrochloroquine in some health facilities across the country is putting the lives of over 2,000 persons with rheumatoid arthritis at risk. The essential drug is currently being used to treat persons who have contracted COVID-19 and to the Electoral Commission now they have responded to the National Democratic Congress. The EC says it is impossible for the election management body to conspire with any political party for institute or any institution to rig the elections. In a statement signed by the acting director of public affairs, Sylvia Arno, the commission rejected claims by the chairman of the NDC at a press conference on Thursday, the 14th of May. Now, the statement reiterated that Ghana's electoral body would not be able to do anything untoward. Now, Ghana's government says plans are far advanced to facilitate the transportation of all Ghanaians who are stranded abroad to bring them back home. This was disclosed by Deputy Foreign Affairs Minister Charles Oredu, who says a list of all who want to return to Ghana has been presented to the president for further action. Now, the Bank of Ghana is to finance government's budget up to the tune of 10 billion CDs. The governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, explains that the, imp the impact of COVID-19 on the economy makes it uh, imperative to intervene. The central bank, meanwhile, has maintained the policy rate at 14.5%. All right, so those are the local stories we have for you tonight. Let's find out what's happening also around the world, starting from Israel. And Israel is set to get its first Ethiopian-born minister with the nomination of a female prime minister brought there in a secret operation in the early 1980s. Pina Tamano Shata has been chosen by incoming Deputy Prime Minister uh, Benny Gantz, who is forming a unity government with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The new government is expected to be sworn in on Sunday. A vaccine against the coronavirus appears to have provided protection against the disease, the COVID-19, in six re uh, rhesus Mackay monkeys. It gives early hope for the vaccine, which is now undergoing human clinical trials. There is no guarantee this result will translate to people, though. Uh, to the U.S. now, the U.S. President Donald Trump has vowed to deliver a coronavirus jab by the year's end as he launched a White House vaccine initiative dubbed Operation Warp Speed. The effect will begin with studies um, on 14 promising vaccine candidates for accelerated research and approval. And Brazil's Health Minister Nelson Tage has resigned after less than a month on the job following disagreement over the government's handling of the country's escalating coronavirus crisis. Taich had criticized a decree issued by President Jair Bolsonaro allowing gyms and beauty parlors to reopen in Brazil. All right, so those are the stories we have for you, local and international headlines. Let's delve straight into our major stories we're looking for you tonight. Starting from the education from the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment, that's NACA, has released first batch of textbooks for basic schools. This comes after almost eight months uh, that the Ghana Education Service introduced new curriculum for basic schools. A statement by NACA signed by the Executive Secretary, Dr. Prince Ama says the textbook has uh, gone through a series of reviews between NACA and the publishers to ensure they conform to the expectations of the new KG Basic 6, from KG to Basic 6 curriculum. All right, so let's uh, subject this to some further analysis. We do know that, uh, yes, schools are yet to reopen, but then how do we put this in perspective and prepare pupils as they get ready to go to school? Already, we know that examination timetables are out, but before we go into all of that, 
Let's look at the comprehensive nature of this, uh, this timetable that has been released for basic schools. And uh, we've been joined via Skype, uh, on Skype, by two men, uh, Zoom, I beg your pardon, <laughs> Skype, Zoom, uh, by two men who've been following this particular development quite closely. Uh, let me quickly introduce them. Cosmos, uh, Emina is a public relations officer for the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment, NACA. Uh, he's joined us. Good evening, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. And uh, we also have Peter Pate Anti, the Executive Director of the Institute for Education Studies. Good evening, Peter, as well. Good evening. Uh, let me start with you, Cosmos. Um, how many textbooks in all are we talking about here? Okay. I said now. Uh, hello, Cosmos, can you kindly speak up? Um, we are unable to hear you clearly. Okay. I said, um, as, as of now, we have to have a few, we don't have to have a few, but I'm not sure if you can take it. Unfortunately, we are unable to hear. We will we'll try and uh, reconnect with you shortly, Cosmos, if you just indulge us uh, for some time. But for now, though, let's uh, speak to Peter Pate. He, he um, is also quite vexed when it comes to educational matters. Peter, thank you for, for your time. Um, finally, at least we know that the first batch of textbooks are out, and that has come after about eight months in waiting. What do you make of the fact that at least it is out um, now that pupils are home? I thank you very much and good evening. Uh, well, we will say that it's better late than never. Um, uh, although the students are no more in school, the textbooks are, are here. We understand that it, it had to go through a lot of laborious processes. We were expecting that the textbook would be available at least during the second semester. But then because of the uh, COVID break, we, 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 the students will not be able to um, I, I assess it unless maybe it's, it's put in the market for parents to buy and then they can use it to supplement whatever uh, virtual learning that is going on on television. So we, 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 we first would, 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 would appreciate the work of the regulatory body, which is NACA, and we would hope that uh, going forward, uh, some of these things are, are done uh, uh, on time. H have you had the chance to review the book yourself, at least any of them? Have you gone through? No, I've not seen any of the textbooks yet. Um, I think they were adult today. Um, we have not been able to assess any of them. But then we hope that whatever content that is in it, the, the, the professionals that have reviewed this over this long period would, would be able to uh, make, make sure that they are contents that are fit for purpose. Mm. Well, what would you say accounted for the delay from where you sit? And um, at least, like you mentioned earlier, better late than never. But what, in your analysis, uh, accounted for the delay? Yeah, I think um, speaking to the officials from NACA, we were, made to, uh, we, we were made aware that NACA officially is not responsible for production of the textbooks. It is the duty of the uh, publishers to mm. work on the textbooks. What NACA does is to regulate the activities uh, of these publishers and they review the, the documents as and when they are made available to them. So you might want to blame the, the system that you operate. And it is, it is true that if you look at the trajectory of, um, of the uh, uh, development of curriculum and production of textbooks over the years, it is always true that the curriculum comes before the textbooks are produced. And that is why last year, when we were having some of this discussion, mm. we, 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 we advocated that NACA should be given the authority to kickstart the production of the textbooks because when you look at, when it came to the production of the teacher, teacher's manual, you, you were aware that they were really available for the teachers when the textbooks were, were, were uh, sorry, when the curriculum were, was, was developed. So if NACA is in charge of the production of the test books, then it will, it will mean that the test books and the curriculum and the teacher manuals would all be ready at the same time for students and teachers to use them for the, the teaching and learning process. But mm. so far as we have left it in the hands of the producers, it is going to be very difficult for them to, uh, for, for NACA to uh, release the test books 
as and when they prepare the curriculum because you need the curriculum first before you, you come up with the textbooks. Okay, let me go to Cosmos now. I hope that we have been able to establish a better connection. Uh, Cosmos, if you can hear me, uh, the question I posed to you earlier was, um, uh, the, how many in all, in total, how many textbooks are we looking at? Okay, so um, what, what we'll do is, Cosmos, just pardon us, what we will do is that we will call you via phone We'll call you on phone so we okay. can have a better connection is, with you, so you can give us better explanation on that. Thank you. Um, we've been trying to speak with Cosmos. Um, I Amina, mean, his public relations officer for the uh, National Cur Council for Curriculum and Assessment, that's NACA. The list of textbooks have been released, and uh, that's what we are trying to assess and find out what caused the delays and how, uh, what and what they have put in, especially now that uh, pupils and teachers have been waiting for this. We'll reconnect with him shortly when we return from this break. But let's wrap up briefly with uh, Mr. Peter Pate, Ante, um, so that uh, we can, he can take leave of us. Uh, Mr. Ante, in conclusion, you have uh, also been advocating that everything should have been done on time, at least. The textbook should have been on, on time, the curriculum itself on time. In the wake of COVID-19 and the fact that at least they've been released, how does that play in the scheme of things for our, education, uh, our educational sector? Yeah, so, so the next thing sh it should be that these tests should be ad advertised uh, uh, widely for and then and the, the, the various outlets that are, are supposed to, to, to help sell them uh, should make them available for the parents and then the students and teachers to, 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 to buy. For now, it will be difficult to supply them to the schools. I don't know if there's a mechanism for government to get the test books and supply them to the schools. I think that would be best. But then, if it, it is not going to be possible for now, I think that the, 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 they should make sure it's, it's, it's advertised and the parents can buy. So that parents can now help their kids in, 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 in going through the, the textbooks, whilst the students also enjoy the virtual learning that is being done on, on television. That is what is very important now. So we will we, we'll plead with the, the authorities that they should now advertise it the various places that the, the uh, parents can, can, can purchase them, and the parents should now go out and get these textbooks mm. and yeah, but, take but Peter, their walls through. Peter, let me just um, interject here. Why do we not want to digitize these books? Can we not digitize them? Wouldn't it be a better alternative than having to print um, hard copies, okay. you okay. think? Yeah, I think that is, that is also a very good option. Yes, because there's a platform... There's a e-learning platform from the Ministry of uh, Education, which is zero rated. And I think that the, 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 that process should be, be also uh, looked into if possible. We, we might look at how early this can be done. But if it is possible, then these documents, this curriculum, uh, sorry, these textbooks can be uploaded on these platforms for the students. But you should also understand that the publishers need their money. So if you are going to put it on the platform for free, then it means that you have to find ways and means to compensate the publishers in order that they will not lose out. So mm. it, although it, it would be a nice idea, we have to also look at the other side of it. So whilst we're doing the e-learning thing, we, we still have to advertise and then parents to go and buy so that they can complement their virtual, their virtual learning teachings that's going on, on TV with the textbooks and, and help their, their, their kids to go through in this period. All right, Peter, Pate, and then I would... I would I would want to add that, that going forward, you know, we still they are still working on the GSS curriculum and that of the SHS. Yes. I think going forward, they should streamline the process and also give timelines so that we don't experience this in, 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 in the next. Uh, because if we, we experience this, it means that always we have... There's going to be the yeah, same problem yes. different yeah, times. So we should, they should streamline the timeline and the process so that at least the, 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 the textbooks will be ready, maybe within the first term or the second term. 
after the curriculum has been developed. When they, okay. Peter Pateanti, thank you so much for making time to speak with us. Um, he is the Executive Director at the Institute for Education Studies. Always a pleasure talking to him. This is still News at 10 on TV3. Stay with us. When we return, we'll be speaking to Cosmos, uh, who is with the uh, NACA. They have released the timetable, the, I beg your pardon, the, um, the textbooks uh, for basic schools. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Thank you for staying with us. Let's shift our attention away from education. Now let's uh, focus on health. About 94,000 people die from non-communicable diseases in Ghana each year. That's according to the Ghana Non-Communicable Diseases Alliance. With the um, outbreak of COVID-19, the alliance fears that the numbers will increase due to the seeming neglect of persons living with the disease. Non-communicable or chronic diseases, NCDs, are ailments of long duration and generally slow progression, which present themselves in the form of cancers, chronic respiratory diseases, cardiovascular diseases and diabetes. According to the World Health Organization, they are the leading cause of death worldwide, representing 63% of all annual deaths, amounting to over 36 million deaths each year. In Ghana, NCDs are responsible for 43% of all deaths. The Ghana Non-Communicable Diseases Alliance fears these numbers will increase due to the seeming neglect of persons living with NCDs due to the outbreak of COVID-19. In the face of the COVID-19, we notice that there has been some kind of you know, neglect, you know, or the fact that um, not, no, no, not much attention is given to this specific condition, but you know, people want to just you know, generalize and say, you know, people with online health condition. And we feel that this ought to stop. We noticed that um, there were, you know, challenges that uh, our, our people, I'm talking about people living with non-communicable diseases, were facing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, issues of, you know, stocking their medicines, you know, um, not being able to go, I mean, and, and see their doctors. You know, there are a lot of problems that they were facing medically. Coordinator of the Alliance, Labram Musa, is advocating for increased attention to treatment of persons with underlying health conditions as they are prone to die from COVID-19. We also believe that there's one aspect of the preventive measures which most of it and governments all over the world, I mean, refuse to adequately to acknowledge. The fact that, you know, um, there are certain products or certain commodities that actually impact negatively on our health. And here I'm talking about tobacco smoking, and then here you now we have a lot of the youth into our institution into smoking, and people are abusing these things. You know, we also have alcohol intake, excessive alcohol intake, that's also creating more problems. And then when you look at, I mean, the risk factors to non-communicable diseases, most of them are as a result of, you know, taking this particular commodity. Mm -hmm. So while the, the, the government is, is speaking about, I mean, eating, eating, eating well, ensure that we face masks, we should also encourage, we all want government to also encourage people to, to stay away from, from unhealthy commodities. The Alliance has introduced the Ghana Advocacy Agenda of People Living with NCDs as a roadmap to government and other stakeholders in the health delivery system. Let's go to the Garden City, shall we? President Akufuado is optimistic of a robust public health sector in a post-coronavirus economy. He says that the collective experiences and lessons drawn from the corona pandemic should serve as the foundation block in building a stronger health system. The president was speaking at the coronavirus. Uh, I beg your pardon. The president was speaking at a ceremony to cut sword for work to resume on the maternity and children's block at the Confanochi Teaching Hospital, which has stalled for 44 years. Here's a report by Benjamin Edu. The over 800 bed facility, which started in 1976, will be the largest investment made in the expansion of the hospital since its construction in 1954. Government has secured two credit agreements totaling 155 million euros from the Dutch Bank in Germany and the UK Export Finance to fund the project. Parliament approved the loan facilities in April 2019. President Akufuadu said the project will serve 12 regions in the country upon completion. I also indicated that Parliament has approved the 155 million euro loan to finish and equip 
the maternity and children's block of the Confinante Teaching Hospital. It will serve as a referral center for 12 of the 16 regions of our country. The finalization of this project is as very dear to my heart as it will have a positive impact on our country's drive towards achieving the SDG targets and the maternal and child health. The president appealed to the public to adhere to the protocols and directives to contain the spread of COVID-19. Our policies are working, so let us all abide by them. I thus encourage each and every one of you in Asante Mai and the rest of Ghana during this era of the virus to observe the social distancing and enhanced hygiene protocols that I have outlined. Chief Executive Officer of the Confanoche Hospital, Dr. Ohineba Danso, announced plans to start testing COVID-19 cases at the hospital. Mr. President, as part of the national effort to help achieve same-day delivery of COVID-19 test results, I'm happy to announce that management has facilitated the laboratory services directorate here to complete the setup of a COVID-19 testing laboratory. This follows over three weeks of preparation with all the necessary physical infrastructure, equipment and consumables, and very good test runs validated by the Commercial Center for Collaborative Research, KCCR. Full operations of this special lab will commence on Monday. The Minister of Health, Kweku Ajima Menu, assured of government's commitment to improve health infrastructure in the country. 18 projects have been approved in Parliament for health sector. Out of these 18, six of them are in Ashanti. Masun Kwanta, this big one we are seeing here, Kedie Suami, Robonso, Sabronum, and Obwasi to come. Altogether, since I joined as a health minister, Mr. President, 17 healthcare facilities have been commissioned nationally over the last three and a half years. And government intends to continue this drive in the coming years. The Confanoche maternity block will contain 10 theatres, intensive care units, in vitro fertilization, IVF unit, and a breastfeeding centre. Other facilities include a pediatric surgery unit, pharmacy, dedicated medical oxygen plant, and lecture halls. And that's how we bring the bulletin to a close. I am Martin Isidigate. Thank you very much for watching. There is more news on our website, 3news.com. Do have a good evening and always stay positive. Do enjoy your weekend as well. Bye for now.